Hello students, in this video we're going to be talking about the canon of scripture. Now when we talk about the canon of scripture, we don't mean kaboom or something like this. What we say by canon is, in general, a rule or a measuring stick. So in scripture, the scriptural canon is those books considered inspired by God. And the uh, adjective form is canonical. So to say that something is canonical means it's in the canon, it is a genuine set, part of the genuine set. Now that doesn't mean um, that this is only a biblical term. So you can talk about the canon in lots of things. You can talk about the canon of the Harry Potter series. Okay, so that would be, that would be the original seven books. There are a couple other terms that we need to, to get down here because, you know, there are different ways of referring to different kinds of, or different groupings of, of books in Scripture. So there's the canon, which is the rule, it's the standard. Then there's the proto-canon. So the proto-canon refers to all those books accepted as inspired by Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, and Jews. And these are the ones that everybody agrees about. Because there's some that people disagree about. So there's the deuterocanon, which is the second rule. And this is accepted by Catholics and Orthodox, but rejected by Protestants and Jews. And the term deuterocanon was itself invented by a Jewish convert, Sixtus of Siena, in the 16th century. So this means that some people accept these books and some don't. So again, if we go back to our Harry Potter analogy, we can talk about, well, the canon. So this would be the proto-canon, what everybody agrees is officially a part of the Harry Potter series. But then we have these other books that are deuterocanonical, The Tales of Beetle and the Bard, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And these were actually written by J.K. Rowling, the same author as the canon. Okay. So some people accept these as authentic and, and authoritative. Personally, I stick with the proto-canon in Harry Potter. I don't, I don't accept the deuterocanon of Harry Potter. Okay. So the deuterocanon is the second rule, and so only some people accept the deuterocanon. But there's a, a third term here that we need, to, we need to know, and that's apocrypha. And you'll hear lots of times about apocryphal writings and this sort of thing. Well, apocrypha means literally hidden in the Greek. And this refers to both deuterocanonical books and other books that were rejected from the Deuterocanon, like the Book of Enoch. So, Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, Jews, everybody agrees on the Proto-Canon. Only Catholics and Orthodox accept the Deuterocanon. And then there's the Apocrypha, which refers to everything in the Deuterocanon, plus some other stuff. And that other stuff, well, nobody really uh, accepts. None of the main churches or, or uh, religious groups. So you have the Book of Enoch would be an example, the Book of Abraham, uh, you know, maybe the Gospel of Thomas, um, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Gospel of Peter. None of those things were accepted as canonical by pretty much anybody. So we've got our proto-canon, we've got our deuterocanon, and now we have to ask, well, what would be apocrypha in the Harry Potter world? Well, apocrypha would be the deuterocanonical works of Harry Potter, and in addition, it would be Harry Potter fan fiction written by other people. So here's some of the most uh, viewed stuff. You see the statistics, there are 80, almost 85,000 uh, apocryphal Harry Potter stories that were written, comprising 300,000 chapters. Wow. Okay, but that would be an example of the apocrypha in the Harry Potter world. Okay. So, last bit that's relevant here, what exactly is in the Deuterocanon? Where, what's the disputed territory? So, the list uh, of the books would be Judith, Tobit, Parts of Esther, Daniel 13 and 14, that's Susanna and Bell and the Dragon, those are two stories we'll look at, Wisdom Literature, uh, Book of Ecclesiastes, also known as Sirach, Baruch, and 1 and 2 Maccabees, which are a history of uh, the revolt of Judas Maccabeus uh, and the Jews uh, against uh, various other people. Now, interestingly, when Luther composed his first Bible when he was deciding what was in. He threw out all of the stuff up here, and he also threw out the letter to James, or the letter of St. James. Said that wasn't part of the can canon. And then some people said, hey, Marty, you got to put that back in there. And he changed his mind, and, and he put the letter of James back into the, uh, the canon of Scripture. But that too was, was rejected for a time. Now, interestingly, St. Jerome, the great Catholic saint and biblical scholar, originally rejected the Deuterocanonical books. Yeah, and then as history went on, he did more research and he changed his mind. 